Hello and welcome back to Red Hat OpenShift Data Services Office Hours. I'm your host, Frank Lavinia, the global go-to-market lead for data services here at Red Hat. And with me, I have two fantastic guests that we're going to talk about Trino, S3 Select, and Ceph. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, welcome, um, welcome, Gal and Daniel. Uh, so tell me, tell me, uh, let's talk about data and data storage. Yeah, hi, Frank. Um, yeah, so we wanted to to cover today um, a little bit about um, IBM uh, storage, Ceph, uh, just Ceph in general. Not since we moved to to IBM, but in the end, we we are doing a lot of work with analytical tools, uh, improving object storage. Now, especially speaking about object storage and all of the movement that we have from the data side to actually data lakes, data lake houses, not to really consume um, storage uh, and objects that we have lying around, like um, unstructured, structured uh, file files that we have in our S3 object that can be interesting to analyze for data tools. So. We really wanted to go through a little bit one of these tools, now that is Trino, Presto, cover it um, at a high level, and also show how it integrates with with Ceph, with Raiders Gateway. You know that is the object storage side of things from from Ceph. Um, in in like in the recent times, we have been doing quite a lot of work regarding from, from the RGW team, the Raiders Gateway team that uh, Gal is part of. We have been doing a lot of work with analytical tools and improvement there. One of them is S3 Select that we're going to cover today, you know, that is really pushing down the SQL queries into RDW. But there are other things going on, like, for example, having cache tiers uh, closer to the compute. So you could also improve those uh, SQL responses by having a cache, also intelligent caching, you know, that we call D3N, that is coming out on the next release of Ceph, as GA, you know, in 6.1. And then we have like an advanced cache that is going to be called this is called d4n no that it was taken it to, to the next level no because it's like intelligent caching and it's really trying to improve the per, the general performance no of of the analytical tool experience by reducing accelerating queries and getting things to go faster no i think that's important because you know uh, as a data scientist uh, i can speak for a lot of other data scientists that we don't think about the storage right Storage is just one of those things that just magically appears. Uh, it's all magic, right? It's kind of like, you know, when you go and you you flip your light switch on, you don't think about all the logistics and uh, no. all the engineering that goes into making sure the lights work or, you know, you turn on your phone, right? Like, it just works. Um, and I think, that, I think that storage is really, you know, um, on, previously on this YouTube channel, I talked about the notion of rock stars and roadies, right? Like, Data scientists have been used to being, you know, the AI is really the rock star now, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. a large language model this, you know, um, large language model that. But underlying all that, there's a lot of material, right? A lot of the roadies, right? So people may show up for, you know, the large language model magic uh, or the AI magic. But underneath it all, there's just mass quantities of data. Mass quantities of data have to live somewhere and they're in storage. So I think I think it's important we understand kind of, uh, the full stack here and what Red Hat and IBM's response or answer to this is because storage is a fundamental aspect to not just data science, but just business in general, right? If you write a, if you write a web application, right, your, that data go has to go somewhere. <laughs> you know, people don't want to enter their shipping address every time they go and buy something online, right? Or, you know, kind of do all that, right? Obviously, I guess some privacy people would love to do that, but data has to be stored somewhere. So, so tell me, um, so Seth, what, what's the foundation here? The foundation is Seth and that storage over uh, OpenShift. Is that, that basically what it is? Yeah, so here we have like uh, two approaches in which you can actually consume Ceph, or in this case, um, uh, Radius Gateway or the S3 object storage. You know, that is really what we are speaking about, thinking about uh, data, lake, uh, data lakes a little bit in the old school or maybe um, data lake houses, no, that where uh, Trino Presto also comes into play, where we have this SQL um, uh, engines, no, that we want to really um, reduce the times that it takes to just uh, query and analyze data, no. So, Ceph, really, you can consume it 
standalone, we could say. So you could have like a standalone deployment with your bare metal nodes and you can actually deploy that in, in huge sizes because the, the scale out capabilities that it has are really great. No, you could grow into the petabytes, into the exabytes, so it re can go really huge like a data lake. But you could also consume SF, as you mentioned, inside OpenShift. No, that this is what we call um, OpenShift Data Foundation or Fusion Data Foundation in, in the IBM side of things. So that's also possible. Uh, Raiders Gateway, so the, the object storage interface is also available there. The only thing is that normally inside OpenShift, as you can imagine, you would see like uh, lower scale deployments. So it can also scale because the architecture that is there is Ceph now in the end, and Ceph is really built to scale out. But uh, you will normally just by by have, by the nature of OpenShift clusters, no, they will be a little bit lower in size. So you can actually do both. No, you can consume your S3 storage <laughs> from OpenShift to an external self cluster, a huge external self cluster, or you can actually run as pods uh, with operators your self cluster inside OpenShift. No, so that's also a choice that you can uh, you have that you can make. Okay, interesting. So there's a there's a lot here that you know I myself am not necessarily familiar with, and I think I uh, don't want to speak for the audience, but I think it's always good for data scientists to, to get off from you know the top of the mountain and kind of understand how things actually work under the covers, because I think that can that can help data scientists be more efficient and more effective uh, in terms of making sure their models can train faster, because ultimately it's yeah. a, it's about the pipeline, right? And a big part of that pipeline. Yeah. is the data that's actually stored so so uh, i understand you have a demo also uh, uh, the thing is that we're going to start with explaining uh, what what is uh, all about the push down paradigm what is s to select it's uh, you know uh, this buzzword need to be explained first we can also demo it uh, by the way it's here but but the, the as you said as a data scientist that live up there we're going to explain now. I'm going to explain now how does it look down there uh, from the middle tier, I think, from the Rados Gateway point of view. But Rados Gateway point of view, which is another buzzword, by the way, you don't, you never heard about that, and you don't want to remember about that, but uh, it's there. And we're going to explain why using uh, this latest uh, feature of SS Select integrated with Trino, which is a more common analytical tool, is really a, a great uh, combination. And that's actually my uh, main mission, my main mission today. And excellent. Also, OK. No, excellent. Let's see it. I'm excited because uh, okay. this is, this is a, a side of our products that I've not really spent a lot of time in. So OK, uh, so I will present now. Yeah, yeah. please go ahead. Okay. I will just mention why Gal is, is uh, sharing the screen that also we can, it's not exactly that, but it's true that if you hear Trino, if you hear Presto, Prest, uh, or Trino SQL, so, so they're interchangeable more or less, no? because they're, they, 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 they were forks no? from, from the actual initial project that started at, at Facebook. But just in case we speak about Trino, Presto, you could more or less think of them as, as interchangeable. It's true that each of them have developed separate branches now, but more or less the, the, the architecture and the scheme are the same. Okay, okay. You can see that? Okay. So one second, let me organize my, all my screen here. Okay. Um, and I can cut this part out, like I can edit this part out. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so uh, in July 20, first of all, my name is Gal Salamon. I'm a member of a Ceph team. I'm, I'm in the Ceph team for uh, the last uh, recent uh, four years. Uh, my, my main focus is S to select this analytical uh, uh, brand, uh, how to make uh, the Ceph storage, how to make the storage, okay? Uh, much more attractive for analytical operation. And, and actually this presentation is about that, uh, to convince you that it's much better now. Okay, so uh, in July 2020, Aesthetic was introduced first to Ceph upstream. Uh, it, by the way, it was announced by AWS in 2018, about uh, uh, two years uh, before that. S3 Select is another S3 request. Uh, it enables the client to push down an SQL statement into Ceph storage and, and, um, and actually run the SQL statement inside the storage itself. It's not an easy thing to do. I will try to explain why it's not easy and why it's so important to do that. Um, 
S2 Select is a, it's a new S3 capability. Uh, it's, a, it's designed to pull out only the subset of the data that you need. Uh, and, and this can dramatically improve your performance. It reduces also the cost of the application that needs to access uh, the data in, the, in S3. And it should be noted that uh, the S3 request implementation inherits, um, uh, this is a bit, uh, uh, needs some explanation. Uh, explanation. Uh, there is a uh, general thing like, give me the object, give me the file that I need. And what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, this new capability of running SQL statement inside the storage, we didn't change the Ceph, we didn't change Radius Gateway. We rely on uh, on something that is already there. I will try to explain that more in, in, in later uh, slides. Um, I can say that S3 Select is kind of uh, get get me my object on steroids. It's the SQL expression and it's processing is the main difference, and that we'll discuss later. Okay, um, why do we need that? What, what is it, why does it uh, so good for? For what purpose is it, is it good for? Now, it's it's about push down paradigm, okay? The push, push down paradigm, it's an old notion. Uh, actually, if you know Rocker, you have the, the store procedure for one example, it's very old paradigm. You have it everywhere, it, it's something that oh, in these days, been uh, discussed and done also in, in so many uh, uh, features in our disk and stuff like that. In this case, uh, the, the push paradigm is about actually moving the operation close to the data, which is really uh, contrary to what we commonly do. Uh, we're usually moving the data to the place of the operation. We bring the data to the place of the operation. So push down does not, cons uh, and you need to understand that uh, that push down does not consume memory while uh, while while caching uh, caching if we are using caching for for uh, storage does consume uh, memory and uh, in, in big data ecosystem it's uh, it's really make a difference uh, think about all these objects of terabytes uh, and you need to cache it it's really uh, it's really a problem so um Again, upon uh, using a, a cache paradigm, uh, uh, the flow is about what data to keep in cache and what data uh, to invalidate, okay? So, and, and upon uh, um, uh, pushing down, uh, the flow is about uh, what operation should push down and how to use the return results. So let's take uh, one example, let's say, uh, you want to uh, execute the following uh, query. Select uh, sum of uh, column X from uh, uh, some object where A, uh, column A is bigger than column C. So uh, usually what you do is you need to fetch the entire object to the client side, okay? And only then to execute the, the operation with some kind of an analytical uh, uh, application. Uh, with push down, as to set in this, uh, in, in this use case, uh, the entire operation is actually executed on the server side and only the result, which is uh, a restricted uh, a subset of the, the data, only that is returned to the client side. And this is a, a crucial sometimes, could be very crucial. Um, uh, an SQL query, a SQL query that needs to operate on CSV or JSON objects uh, that contains many columns and rows but it's only a very small portion of it, uh, a few columns or maybe a small percentage of the rows will retain only a small amount of data, meaning less operations of serialization and deserialization. And also it should be noted that uh, 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 pushing down uh, opera uh, uh, operation uh, close to data, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, the, so the storage is usually very fragmented. Um, you know, these objects are break to many pieces it's all over there on, on, the, on the cluster. And it's very difficult to, to execute a single query on many random pieces. And, uh, and some of these pieces could be a, a binary, a binary uh, object. So to your question, uh, it's quite complicated to push down SQL statement and run that on some kind of uh, object. Um, uh, what what SQL like is capable of to do, uh, capable of? Um, uh, SSLEC does not turn your, uh, your storage into database. Okay, your, your storage remains a storage, but it does improve the, uh, greatly the efficiency of the SQL processing. It, it, should, it should note also that SQL dialect that we provided by the SSLEC is, uh, is for read only. 
it's for the select statement. And there is no notion of schema or table. The object should be read, uh, should, be, should, should enable tabular operation. Uh, SSLX system is embedded into the get object uh, module. Uh, into, it's embedded into the, uh, all the models of, uh, of uh, uh, handling uh, the storage. So uh, it makes it very efficient uh, for the push down operation. Uh, so upon SQL uh, uh, query uh, being pushed down, the object is fetched and each fragment of the object is, is processed by the SSLX module. But uh, and since uh, the SSLX is embedded into the S3 system, there are no redundant uh, copies uh, of bytes. Uh, the object is processed immediately and, and results sent back to the client. Moreover, the SSLX system is capable of processing uh, uh, different types of uh, objects like uh, CSV, JSON, and also Parquet. And the same engine is processing all of these uh, object types. Now, uh, for the question that was maybe was asked is why, why using SQL, okay? So uh, SQL Server uh, is a, a querying language uh, for machine learning things. Um, it, it's a standard language for uh, accessing and, and manipulating uh, uh, data. Uh, and also should be noted that SQL is a, it's a domain specific language, more than 40 years, and was designed initially for manipulating data. So in machine learning workflow, uh, data is the primary source and, uh, and its uh, accuracy and relevance uh, are critical for the su successful modeling and uh, pattern detection. So uh, it is essential to, uh, to ensure that the data is uh, properly formatted uh, for use by machine learning uh, algorithm. And furthermore, uh, in later slides, um, we're going to discuss the, uh, the, the Trino uh, tool uh, that can perform the push down uh, uh, operation on SQL, uh, of SQL statement, enabling that um, and this is really uh, interesting stuff because the Trino is able to uh, um, to take a huge SQL statement, back them into a, a, a subquery, and, and push them for optimization into the storage. And and this is why we think that uh, uh, we know, not just uh, thinking, that uh, the integration of Trino is an integral tool for data scientists. And uh, Ceph, which support S3 Select, it's a great combination for uh, much better performance. Um, so, also given the ability to to read and process uh, uh, common data sources such as uh, CSV and JSON and Parquet, S3 Select, Select is a really viable uh, uh, tool for machine learning uh, purposes. Um, so, for my fellow data scientists out there, not everything is a comes ready-made into a pandas data frame. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and in and, and this slide, you can see actually, uh, it's really a simple, simple one. Uh, the amount of data that's actually came, uh, passing by from the storage to the client side. Uh, so why, why SSEC is useful for, this, for our storage, for S3 storage is uh, we know that S3 storage is reliable, efficient, and, and relative uh, cheap. Uh, a typical uh, Ceph user may aggregate along the years a, a tons of objects. Uh, these objects contain huge amount of data, uh, structured and unstructured. This uh, uh, massive amount of data is sitting there in a cold state, uh, and that data could be very precious uh, to you. Uh, and uh, But to know that that, that that is precious to you, you, you need to actually to extract this data from the storage, and this is really expensive. Think about, you have terabytes of, of CSV and JSON, and, and, and you need to know what, what's going on there. Uh, so this kind of operation consume a lot of network, and also CPU, because all of this serialization and deserialization operation when, when you are extracting information from the storage. But uh, while using S2 Select on this kind of uh, cold data, uh, it makes the SSTEC very cost effective for analytical, analytical operation. Uh, so you can say that our goal is to make, uh, to turn the Ceph object storage more attractive for analytical uh, operation, not just uh, for uh, storing data. Um, okay, uh, some points of uh, software design, I really make it uh, a quick one. Uh, uh, the engine itself from C++ perspective is uh, add-only uh, 
uh, code is there are no libraries or the one exception is uh, the Apache Aero Parquet. Uh, you need that for the Parquet reader. It's a single threaded uh, function. It reuses memory for its operation. There's no uh, intensive allocation or deallocation. This is very important for um, for uh, intensive data reading, uh, this kind of uh, uh, property. Uh, the memory that is consumed by the engine is enough for, uh, uh, for the row being processed. Uh, and for that reason, and that is really important, uh, the engine is able to process any size, any size of object. There's no kind of, uh, there's no kind of uh, preloading or something like that, you, uh, because the engine is built in a way that is uh, actually allocate uh, enough memory to consume the next step and that's it. And the reuse and reuse again and again, the same uh, amount of memory. Um, it's also, by the way, a standard application, not just in Ceph, you can, you can actually run it. You're going to see that. Um, uh, uh, the same as S3 select engine can be used uh, from the command line and shell, and shell command. And it can be, and can, it can process a different type of, of data like CSV, uh, JSON and Parquet. Um, and now I'm going to explain a, a bit about the different types of uh, 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 input data source. We have, we actually currently we support uh, three types: the CSV, which is quite common, and the JSON is also quite common, and Parquet, which is uh, considered a very, a very efficient uh, uh, binary uh, format. And uh, and and they are quite different in the way uh, the in the way the the storage internals are actually uh, process that. So uh, as I said, CSV is the most uh, simple format. It's uh, it's not supporting data, ty data types. It has a trivial scheme of support. Uh, almost every log file ca can become a, C a CSV object. Uh, JSON is more sophisticated format. It supports data types and also the schema. So um, upon uh, me to know to understand that upon processing a query, uh, both format the CSV and JSON, you have to read the, the all object. So it, in the case you have a, a big table of uh, one terabyte, okay, and it's a CSV uh, object or JSON object, you have to read all of it, okay. Even if if you need only a, a, a small portion of it, but in order to know that, you have to scan all the, the all object. That's the set story. That's why to push it down, it's much better. Parquet, on the other hand, is very advanced uh, object. It contains uh, enough metadata it, that enables you, the, the user, to access only the data that you need for the query processing. Uh, and that it means by, by using Parquet object, it's not just saving network bandwidth, which is really important, but it also saves uh, a lot of IOPS on the server side. Um, OK, so the, let's talk about the flow itself. Uh, you can see here the, the CSV. Um, in the case of CSV, the, the Rados gateway fetches a chunk after chunk. Uh, we need to understand that objects that are saved into storage are not saved as a, a contiguous uh, uh, big chunk of memory or, or on the storage. They are actually break into many, many pieces. Uh, in our case, usually there are four meg pieces. So it's hundreds and thousands uh, and thousands of, uh, of little chunks. And uh, what Rados Gateway is, is doing is actually uh, uh, pushing this chunk to the SS Select engine. And the SS Select engine knows how to uh, process that. This chunk actually breaks. Uh, if you think about a CSV, the, the regular CSV that we know, it actually breaks rows in the middle. It actually breaks fields in the middle. But the engines know, the, re the, the CSV reader and the, with, with the engine knows how to uh, stitch it together without reloading. And this is really a, a, a crucial feature for this kind of uh, uh, processing. Okay, so if we're asking about what happened down there, this is what it's happened down there. Yeah, uh, the, the object is completely uh, a break to many, many pieces, totally fragmented uh, in, on, on, uh, with, as uh, random pieces, and the engine know how to gather this, uh, all these pieces and to run a SQL query on it. Um, Okay, um, the next thing, okay. And here on the contrary, let's talk uh, discuss the parquet issue, the parquet uh, use case. So parquet is a, is a binary file. It's a, um, what we call a columnar uh, uh, object. 
uh, this, uh, uh, this type of object contains a lot of metadata. It enables the reader to skip an unnecessary information. Uh, at first, the engine is reading, uh, is validating that uh, it's really a, a parquet object. Uh, but in the next step, what it does is actually uh, fetch only the, 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 the columns that uh, actually participate in the query itself. So if we take the example of that we used uh, uh, earlier, select A where B uh, uh, bigger than C, it will only fetch the A, the B, and C, and actually it will fetch the B and C which belong to the predicate. And only if it's, uh, it's returned true for the B is bigger than C, only then it will fetch A. And now since it's a parquet object, it's only uh, uh, fetch only the, uh, you know, only to fetch this, uh, uh, this data and, and without scanning anything else. And this is a really a huge, uh, uh, um, uh, it's quite efficient compared to the other two types of uh, JSON and, and uh, uh, CSV. So uh, just to uh, a bit uh, explain about that. So the main difference between the parquet reader and the CSV reader that uh, Upon CC flow, the Rados gateway, uh, this layer uh, fetch, that, that fetch chunk after chunk and, and, and process that each of that uh, uh, separately, uh, um, you can say that the Rados gateway, uh, the storage, uh, this uh, storage uh, unit control uh, the start and end, the pro and the end of the process. In the case of Parquet, the engine, uh, the, the engine itself uh, is uh, issuing a, a read range request so it means that the SSX engine is uh, SSX engine control the start and the end of the process. Uh, from from that uh, data scientist uh, point of view, it doesn't uh, 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 too much of a difference. Okay. Um, as for the JSON, um, as you can see here, this uh, weird uh, a bit weird uh, slide. Uh, I'm trying to explain why the JSON reader is uh, unique uh, compared to other readers. So upon, uh, upon a query uh, a JSON document, the SSL select engine is focusing only on specific parts of, the, of this uh, nested and complex uh, JSON data, and not the, the old JSON, not the old JSON documents. It means that only specific parts of the JSON documents are, are loaded into the SQL engine uh, for processing. And uh, a, a short example, uh, you can see in, in, in this slide uh, <clears throat> that the SS statement here is focusing, uh, it's processing on a specific part of the documents according to the front close uh, uh, construct. You can see that uh, uh, if you look uh, uh, on the front close, it actually, it's actually a path. Uh, and this path actually uh, tell the, uh, the JSON reader where to look, uh, where to start to look for uh, the, the, the next row and where, when the row is ended. So uh, the, you can say that, uh, for, uh, that the form close is actually defined, the boundary is where to get the projection and the predicate uh, columns, okay? So in, in, the, in this uh, next slide, you can see that I changed a bit the form close. So if you look at the boundaries of the row, it also changed a bit, okay? It changed because now, uh, um, uh, upon the JSON reader is reading the old document, is actually uh, uh, reading uh, a, a bit differently. It's only uh, loading only uh, some parts of the JSON uh, documents. Why I decided all of this? Uh, because it must um, uh, note that um, uh, from the storage point of view, uh, it's really a big mess. Uh, if you think about a really a big JSON or many JSON uh, files, uh, in, in the storage are back to many, many pieces. So uh, the only one that can actually uh, uh, know when uh, the row is started and, and ended is the JSON reader itself. So you can say that uh, in contrary to the other readers, the JSON reader is the one that actually uh, uh, um, um, is leading the processing. And this is uh, uh, quite different from the other uh, reader, which is the CSV and Parquet. Uh, this uh, thing that which I am noting now is uh, really uh, uh, for the people which are uh, a bit more technical for the, uh, for the uh, uh, storage layer. 
Uh, it's a it's a big difference. Uh, it's a big difference to read uh, a JSON document and the Mecca SQL processing compared to Parquet and compared to CSV. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Okay. Um, as mentioned before, it's quite easy to run uh, uh, SS like as a uh, from the command line. Um, actually, you can run it in a, on, a, on a shell on a shell uh, command. Uh, it can work on a standard input uh, or on or on files on, which reside on your local uh, file system. Uh, you, you just need to review uh, the GitHub uh, repo. Uh, let's look at a, a few uh, examples here. Okay. Um, in in the first um, in the first um, uh, uh, example. The SQL statement is actually uh, a processing the standard output of a PS command. Okay, I'm just it's just for uh, um, uh, presenting the, the power of the S -select, S -to select statement and, and, and engine. And, uh, and this time it uh, processes the input as a CSV type. So now please know that the, the SQL statement uh, uses the column names, uh, uses actually the columns that you see here in the statement itself, is, it uh, does select PID, uh, select command from STD input where the parent PID is equal to one. And how does it know about these column names? It actually extracts that from the first, uh, from the first line of the, of the PS, uh, uh, of the PS uh, command. Uh, and, and by, uh, I'm, Indicating that with the CSV adder info, it's uh, it's uh, this is the way the CSV uh, uh, know about the schema. You just uh, uh, state that uh, the first line is actually the column name, and that's it. And again, this is from the command line. Uh, command line. A second example, you can see that I'm using already existing uh, uh, container. Uh, this input data is uh, is piped into the container itself. Okay. The container consists all the necessary. By the way, this container spe specifically contains all the necessary packages. Also, is a, a Apache Arrow uh, and and for Parquet reader. You can also uh, you have the grid utilities. You can, it's enabled the user to uh, uh, to review code, change the code, and actually review that if if somebody wants to do that. Uh, and the third example, you can see it, it's uh, it uses the same uh, container. In this case, it mounts the auth directory to the uh, container uh, directory and it enables the user to run SSelect select on any file without installing or building SSelect. select actually. Um, okay, challenges ahead of us. Um, and this is uh, maybe the, the main stuff that we uh, were actually working on that uh, on the recent uh, weeks and months even. Uh, it's, a, it's the integration with Reno uh, and maybe later with Spark also. Uh, we also, are, of course, uh, considering Espresso uh, as well. So, um, SQL analytic uh, application uh, such as Spark and Presto or Trino may use the object storage as their backend uh, storage, okay? But as said, it's, uh, it's very inefficient to use uh, this kind of storage sometimes, and uh, that is because it needs to receive the all object uh, particip participate in the in the query itself. So, uh, upon using SSL select uh, request instead of get object, uh, this will improve the query performance uh, dramatically. Um, so, you understand that the SSL is actually kind of an optimizer for this kind of uh, the, for this high level application. It means that uh, the Trino. Uh, uh, the Spark and uh, and the Presto DB, actually their engine uh, analyze the, the big query and know how to make it uh, 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 much more optimized by by breaking it into sub query and push that to the server side and reduce significantly the amount of bandwidth uh, network bandwidth that you need to for processing the uh, um, uh, this query. Um, um, uh, by the way, this type of uh, optimizer already exists in the AWS EMR. And uh, almost the end of the presentation, I really want uh, to show you, uh, this is an article that uh, was published only in the last November by AWS and Trino and Starburst. And uh, it's a joint effort. They actually improve and upgrade the Trino software and also contribute that to the open source. 
Uh, and we are using, <laughs> we're currently using that open source uh, this uh, recent uh, month we, for our integration of Ceph and uh, Twino. They ran TPCDS benchmark in scale of uh, three terabytes uh, uh, on that integration of uh, Twino and uh, AWS uh, software. And as you can see, uh, I put on the, I highlight some parts of that. Uh, it's, the results are really, really impressive. The, um, the best uh, query was about nine times the reduced overall uh, uh, network uh, bandwidth, uh, I think about 20, 21 times. And uh, it's really, uh, it's a big thing. And uh, they're making a lot of, uh, and I can see by looking into the repo, Twin repo, they are doing a lot of job there uh, of the integration between AWS and Trino. <laughs> okay. Um, and this slide, it, this is, uh, we are currently doing this, uh, this benchmark that was run by uh, AWS and uh, Trino. We are actually doing, going to do that ourselves uh, to show that also that the combination of Ceph and Trino is, uh, and SPSelect, of course, it's a great combination. And, uh, and, and from this uh, really uh, uh, small table that we only run a few, uh, a few queries, you can see that the amount of data uh, that is, uh, is going back to the uh, client side is reduced significantly uh, by this career, of course, from uh, 10 gigabytes to uh, a few megabytes. And uh, a number of rows, again, it's uh, instead of returning back uh, 65 million rows, you're returning back only uh, uh, 200 in, in this case. And, and it also reduce the amount of seconds that you need to for processing this uh, um, uh, uh, data. And uh, I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. And that's it. That's yeah. It. What I wanted to, to ask you there, um, Gal, is also that this example that you have here is really not not, not a benchmark, no, it's just a, a, a test that don't take this the data there as 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 something that is um, like done through a benchmark is just to show the enhancements and to inf um, just uh, make clear you know, th those advantages on, on what you can save from the network and also how you reduce the query times by doing those push down jobs, not from the, actually from the storage. So it's just to take that into account. And I understand that you're actually working on, on, on the true benchmarking you know, and, uh, and getting some results there also. Yeah, and the results are really uh, are quite, uh, uh... On uh, on the first stage, yes, but uh, um, we are using uh, TPCDS. What are we actually doing now? We are uh, uploading a TPCDS uh, a, a, a data and running uh, these uh, queries, and we can see that sometimes it's about uh, five times or ten times. It depends. It really depends on the query. If the query, if you do like a select star where everything, so you bring up the whole object. There's no much of uh, 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 you don't get too much efficiency, but if you are uh, you're going to um, uh, uh, select only a, a, a small portion, a few percentage, uh, less than, uh, and that's that's the thing that happened many times. And uh, when you uh, data scientist uh, does its uh, uh, work, uh, you're going to uh, really uh, reduce a lot, uh, really a lot of uh, network bandwidth and improve the overall. Uh, 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 performance of the of the cluster. Uh, once we have these numbers, we uh, we will be happy to, of course, to uh, uh, publish that. Yeah, because from what I understand now, from what you just said, there is also that um, it, it depends on the size of the data set, but also yeah. it, it depends on how specific you are with the SQL um, query that you are running. If you really filter down all that SQL query, you make it really big yeah. and you're, you're, you're targeting a small portion of data, the improvements are going to be huge yeah. compared to maybe, as you said, no, a select asterisk where you're just querying everything, you have to bring everything, that those results are going to be huge and you're going to bring everything back to the client in any case, so you wouldn't see uh, yeah. such a big improvement. So so yeah, it actually it, depends. Yeah. yeah, it depends. We can think of really a, really a small uh, example. Let's say, um, a table and then say, uh, bring me all the rows where column A is equal five. Let's say it bring only uh, 
Now the second query says, bring me all the, uh, all the rows that uh, where A is not equal five. So we will bring all the rest, which is quite big. So uh, that's why they're saying, also in, in, in AWS, you need to analyze your query and, and find out if it, that's what you need. So the, from the majority of use cases, it will uh, really improve your uh, efficiency in a uh, significant matter. That, that's for sure. Because as long as your queries are written in a way that yeah. can be efficient. Okay. Yeah, your Continue. query and data, pro and your data profile. Yeah, you need to know about your data profile. Uh, and there's no, um, this is the, that is the reason that uh, they actually, AWS uh, uh, developed this feature because they understand that so much network is, uh, is consumed to bring back uh, so, much, uh, so much data. Uh, uh, once uh, the main thing is that with with the uh, huge objects when you have a terabyte of objects and you need only one column maybe you have four columns and you need only one percent of it in before the SS select you need to bring the all objects back to the client side which is a lot of things to uh, to get back a lot of network benefit for that and now after the SS select when you push down uh, the, the 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 query it's a different thing. Now there is a, yeah, of course there is a trade-off. You you actually uh, you are asking the storage to to uh, uh, allocate more CPU for this operation, but this trade-off is become uh, we know that it's much more efficient for us because we also uh, by the way we also uh, uh, reduce the amount of serialization and deserialization when you are. Um, um, uh, um, getting a, 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 a terabyte of data from storage from one side, the storage side to the client side over the network, you need to serialize the data and deserialize the data. And this is also a lot of CPU, but when you only uh, bring back only a few kilobytes or a few megabytes of data, much, much less of serialization and deserialization uh, uh, operation. So it's not just about the amount of data that's going through the pipe, it's the amount of work to stuff it into the pipe and send it down. So in this example here, you know, 9.5 gigs of data is gonna require a lot of work, whereas 1.6 meg is probably not a big deal. Not that's exactly. Not. So it's kind of, it's almost like it has cascading efficiencies. Exactly, exactly. Interesting. And, yeah, and no, so yeah, go yeah. ahead, go, go ahead. Okay. What, what, uh, uh, the thing that we uh, we need to maybe to to present uh, somehow um, the Trino is a, a very sophisticated engine, uh, and I try to explain why why we are so uh, eager uh, to integrate that with, with Trino. Uh, SSX, SSX by itself is a very uh, how to say it's very limited uh, SQL dialect. Okay, on um, you have some um, let's say some contract in there but it's uh, quite limited it doesn't have join or it doesn't have group or, or, or stuff like that but uh and uh, it also uh, the SSX it, when, upon its operation it only operates on on a single object it doesn't operate on many objects and this is a really a big difference while trino uh, which is a much more advanced engine is actually uh, it's a full sql engine upon uh, defining a table uh, with a Trino create table uh, uh, statement, you actually can uh, point on a, on a, a bucket of uh, objects. Okay, so your operation going to operate on many objects. That's one thing. But more than that, the the Trino engine know how to split uh, and cut the objects to many pieces and run many queries in parallel. And uh, that uh, this uh, this kind of thing is really a huge thing because it accelerates much. It's not that uh, when you are doing SSL select uh, query, you are actually uh, sending a single request, and you act, uh, you asking the server to push down a, a single SQL query, and to do in a, a single operation. While you are doing that from the Trino uh, client, it's, it's totally different. It actually what, what it does, it breaks the object into many slices of the object. Let's say if it's a, it's a it's a 10 gigabyte of uh, uh, of object. You actually slice it into 1,000 of uh, uh, tiny objects, okay, non-overlapped objects, 
and for each he sent uh, an SSLect select request so you get a, a magnitude of uh, efficiency uh, on this case and, and you, you can see that immediately i mean this is uh, without question what any question is much more efficient you actually uses the storage much more uh, in uh, in a great scale you actually need to stop it a bit <laughs> not to do it too much maybe sometimes that's yeah, interesting no. that's interesting go ahead daniel i'm sorry I cut you off yeah no i was just going to mention that that also fits very well in, into a, a little bit of the lake house discussion in, in the sense that we're trying to move a little bit from the data lakes where maybe some kind of like hive sql query will take loads of time to to give you uh, a response and answer and now moving into kind of the data lake house where we want to be similar we could say or have similar features as a warehouse where a sql statement wouldn't take ages to to actually come back no and, and all of these things that we're seeing here trino and how it can work in parallel with the help of for example s3 select and, and certain cast layers can really take us to that place you know, that we want to be in you know, with with the data lake houses so you have several points of leverage of efficiency. You you, um, <clears throat> you reduce the amount of network using SSLX. select. <clears throat> uh, you have uh, the, <clears throat> the operation of uh, serialization and deserialization. You reduce that. And you're using parallelism. Uh, and this is really a great uh, thing. Uh, you can you gain here a uh, much, uh, uh, much better efficiency upon running a, a SQL query with this kind of combination. Uh, this is a really uh, uh, a winning uh, combination. This uh, uh, Trino with SSelect, it could be also Presto with SSelect, and uh, hopefully also Spark with SSelect, because the SSelect is a kind of a, uh, become a, a common uh, uh, S3 request, which other engines um, uh, want to support that. That's a uh, wishful thing also that uh, which will uh, this 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 feature will uh, also will be supported by the other SQL engine uh, later in the future. Interesting. It's a fascinating it's a fascinating field because I think that there's as the cutting edge of AI kind of moves further and further into requiring more and more data sets, you know, little little bits of optimization this is not saying this is little but bits of optimization i yeah. think are really going to be competitive edges for organizations um in the future i mean uh not just cost but also time um it's it cost and time it's a low cost yeah. it's a cost because it, bandwidth you pay for bandwidth you right pay. exactly well also if you're dealing with kind of uh, again i don't know how much the edge side of things really touches this but if you're dealing with kind of constricted bandwidth for one reason or the other this is a big deal no, it could be. Yeah. interesting all right so where can folks find out more about this uh well um there is the repo i mean um uh, there is SSL like repo of course that uh we will be happy to uh to see people actually contribute or making comments or ask questions or want to, I don't know, any idea they have, uh, this is really, uh, this, uh, that will be great. We think about uh, putting more uh, data types. Uh, I mean, currently we have CSV, JSON and Parquet, maybe ORC, maybe others. And uh, we're thinking about uh, more connectors like Iceberg. Iceberg is very interesting because Iceberg is talking about table management it's something that you need a, a separate presentation for that. And this, this is something for the maybe uh, six months from now, we, we're going to uh, end, up, the end of that also. Uh, but if you go into the net, you can see that others already using the iceberg uh, uh, and table management, which is really uh, show uh, great efficiency when it comes to uh, how to manage very big tables. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thank you, and uh, see you next time on Data Services Office Hours. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.